That short, hot week in England in April made for difficult row stalking. Al Gabriel is a Field Sports Channel shareholder and he asked me to join him on a morning stalk on two patches of ground he looks after in Northumberland. The first is a 6,000 acre beat on a lowland estate. We start before dawn and we see deer. He takes me to a box that has a commanding view of animals venturing out of the woods. It's also a wonderful place to see the sunrise. There's no dew. It's going to be a scorcher. So the majority of the deer tend to come out of uh, that woodland there. So the sun will be rising behind us. So normally it's a nice feeding area in the morning. And there's also a little burn behind us that tends to uh, channel the deer on this side of the estate. It's usually quite productive. Uh, it's my favourite spot usually. You do tend to see hares, herons, cormorants as well, so you never really get bored. This, this state in particular could be quite uh, notorious for buck stalking in the summer because the vegetation and the arable crops, uh, if you don't get them by about end of May, it's very quite hard to hit them uh, later in the season. So we have a very unusual situation here where we have almost two bucks to every doe. So we're really trying to get on top of them this season earlier on. As the sun rises higher, we begin to realise that the only deer leaving the woods for forage is either mad or pregnant. On our way back to the vehicle, we spot a gravid doe. So this is a, an older doe, um, clearly with a descended abdomen, which you would be expecting probably twins. Um, so the family groups of this time of year must have uh, broken up. I can see last year's kids would have been kicked off. That's why the young bucks would be uh, establishing their territories. So it's very rare to see a, you know, a long doe this time of year, but uh, uh, there you have it. With the kind of big open spaces we're seeing here, I have to ask what kind of ranges Al shoots at on this ground. He says the average shot here is 200 yards. It's open country, so hard to get close to animals. And he had to change calibre when he started stalking this estate. Did you start with the 243? I, I did start with the 243. Uh, you know, fantastic calibre, nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just uh, it's the energy element that is a bit of an issue. Um, so, you know, you have a, a more chance of putting the animal down humanely with a 270 or 308 than you would do with a 243. Time to go and see his other ground. On the way up, we stop for breakfast, and he tells me about the deer here. And so we don't particularly get uh, magnificent heads. You know, most of them, the best ones we get here are kind of bronze side. I mean, we don't get one of the, you know, I think it's the mineral in the diet, I'm not sure, but uh, we get decent, fantastic bodies uh, because there's a lot of game feeders nearby and good nutrition. Uh, it was a very large, very large boy actually, um, and I have been seeing him for about two years. Very clever, every time I get close to it, you know, it just seems to send me or no, I'm there. So I've, uh, you know, we've had a few run-ins uh, you know, since last season, so uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm finally caught up to him, uh, and uh, it was in the morning, uh, and, and, I, and luckily I got him on the first day of buck season, so I shot him about 200 yards or so, uh, it was a classic hot shot. There's a sentimental side to Al as he shows with a film he shot on his phone. And I, I was up on the hill uh, looking down and I spotted them and I, I just got my camera out and started filming it. And uh, there was a time where she kind of left it at a spot and she kind of grazed through for about 20 yards and then she called for it. And, uh, and the kid realised and walk, got up and immediately ran to his mum. It was quite a, quite a thing to hear him actually call for the, for the, for the kid. It was quite, I was quite touched by that actually and I, and I did see that kid for a good three, four months after that. And, you know, you're not supposed to get attached to it, but <laughs> can't help that times. <laughs> the doe and kid are in Upland Forestry Commission land that Al has just taken on. Up there, there's a bit of wind and a windmill at the walk-in that helpfully gives Al the wind direction and speed as he starts. We go into the commercial woodland itself and the forestry company is hard at work, so no deer right here. But Al also shows me why he is going to have to work hard on this ground to stay on top of deer numbers. So, so you can assess the density by looking at the amount of uh, damage that's been done to the new plantation. So this sapling here, for instance, was planted about five months ago. Uh, you, you can already see uh, they've nipped the top bud uh, and that interferes with the growth of uh, the tree. And there isn't a single sapling here that hasn't been eaten essentially. So some of it might require replantation. That's a lot of money. Uh, uh, to get that done uh, and it's just uh, the, the, the amount of slots that we see on the ground the amount of droppings um, is, is significant compared to your standard state so this is uh, this is a typical forestry block issue it's just uh, the density of deer is quite high you see them darting around 
uh, right to right. So it's, 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 it's a bigger problem, I think. I ask him to load some cartridges into his rifle in case I need the shot for later. Ah, oh, the magic of television. Not so magic. He needs the cartridges now. A buck dashes across the clear fell and Al has no time to get onto it. Just tell me what happened there. So basically while I was just putting my rounds in, uh, a deer came, a buck came out of uh, the tree line and just bolted into the next tree line. Uh, unlucky. <laughs> the split second, uh, couldn't even get on it. Uh, but yeah, you always have to pay attention at all times. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> and that, sadly, is the only chance of the day. Later, Al sends me this from his lowland ground. So after we stopped filming a couple of days ago, I uh, went in this morning, uh, first light. Uh, I managed to grasp myself a young buck uh, inside the wood line. Uh, shot him about 75 yards. A uh, bit of a drag, about a one mile drag to the car. So I'm hoofing it at the moment. But, uh, very productive morning for uh, the deer management that we do in this estate. Very happy. <laughs> and there's, uh, there's a young buck. Nice animal. It's been a long journey for Al from childhood in Addis Ababa to renting stalking ground in Northumberland. He explains why, and I want you to hear it because it shows the commonality and the community of hunters from wherever they start. I actually met a couple of people uh, in my uh, driven game pheasant syndicates and I got invited for a couple of stalks and I went out with them a few years ago and I kind of got hooked on it and I, I now identify myself as a deer stalker and then, then a wing shooter but uh, yeah I got introduced to just being invited by friends at the shoot and it's one of the great things about joining syndicates is you know you're offered opportunities that you wouldn't be allowed to otherwise so it's been quite a, a good thing actually. Yeah. You've done your deer so well. I've done my deer so well. I'm on my deer so at the moment I'll be to complete it soon. I've, 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 you know, I've progressed a lot and I've had the opportunity to go out with some of the best talkers in the northern Scottish borders. You know, I've, I've, I've kind of absorbed everything they've told me. So uh, yeah, I'd be very lucky to have gone out with a lot of uh, professional stalkers. And I'm still learning, obviously, but I feel I've acquired enough in a short amount of time. 